Welcome everybody live to the Brevard Sports Network here for Thursday night spring football action. I'm Jackson Robb. Alongside me tonight is my partner, Caleb Brown. First of all, Caleb, how are you doing tonight? I am doing fantastic. Glad to see high school football being played. Even if it's only a teaser for one night, I still love it. Yep. You know, we got a few more months till the full season kicks off, but we got spring football tonight. We got O'Galley versus John Carroll Catholic here. And Alan Zolderzinski currently with Logan Pettit has Palm Bay in Umatilla. First of all, let's look at this team. O'Galley coming off a season last year at 7-4 and four record. They had a really hot start to this season. And then, you know, had some troubles later on. But overall, a strong season all the way to the end. The team they lost to in Mainland was a very strong team that went on far in the playoffs as well. So, O'Galley's coming off a hot season. We're going to see... Uh, some new developments at quarterback tonight. We heard we heard that O'Galley confident in their defense right now. They're going to try out some things with their offense tonight, but overall they're going to keep it as a basic game plan and just try some things out, work some things out at quarterback um, as they're going to be looking between Jay Latson and Brody Grantland, Grantland the freshman. So O'Galley's going to be looking to find out maybe who their quarterback for the fall will be or you know maybe just to give them a feel of the game. And, and, and look, that, that's what the spring game is designed to do. Kind of, you know, you try some things out. You see what, what your players have been able to pick up on this, on, in the spring. You've done, you've done a, a month long of game plan and install. And, and that's what spring practice is. It's a whole month of just install after install. Ba- basic things. Also, trying to weed out the people that are wanting to say, oh, I'm on the football team. Mom, look, I'm in the uniform, posting it up for the social media. You also want to weed them out here come spring because you want to see who's going to be with you grinding during those summer you know, summer workouts and the weightlifting plan, things like that. And one of the big stars for me for this O'Galley team is Sam Man Thompson. I mean, I I wish... We, we had a guy like him at, at Rockledge that just you could get behind and run behind him for days. Yep, Sam Man just getting that offer from UCF today, among uh, many others. Incredible uh, anchor on that offensive line. They also got Brandon Brown today getting that offer from Maryland. So you can hear the talent that O'Galley's carrying into this game. You look at John Carroll, though, last season. Although they're out of 1S, they're not a team to push over. They went 10-2. and two. Um, They had wins over Bishop Moore. Both of these teams did. That's a strong team. And this team's only second loss came in the third round of the state playoffs to Trinity Catholic, in which John Carroll moved all the way in to the state final four. So last year, John Carroll had a pretty good year, uh, as well did O'Galley. So that'll be interesting to monitor and just kind of see here. That's what I like about spring football games, even though they're not for the record. I like when teams go out and play teams outside the county because it just gets you some good football, some good experience early on that, you know, kind of you can carry into the fall for some of these newer guys. You know, when you were talking about O'Galley losing to Daytona Mayland, all, all they ended up doing was being state runner-ups and, and, uh, and, and losing to Lake Wales. So, you know, look, if, if you're going to be outed in the playoffs, it doesn't look too bad when, you're, when it's the state runner-up. Uh, while we have a second here, we'd also like to thank some of our sponsors who are making tonight happen. Our first sponsor up is Uberzadi. Do you want to become faster, stronger, and more confident athlete? If so, then Uberzadi is a place for you. Uberzadi is a set of scientifically developed protocols that have evolved over the last 20 plus years to rapidly develop athletes beyond their normal capabilities. Uberzadi provides optimal environment for each athlete's each athlete to re- realize the peak physical and mental performance via the use of high-speed treadmill training with the propriety science-based protocols in combination with ground-based agility and strength training. Uberzadi is for serious athletes, so if this sounds like what you need, visit them online at www.uberzadi.com or call Maximato at 321-412-412. Five nine seven two. I'd like to thank one of our many great po- sponsors, and there's Uberzadi, Best Private Investigation, BlackRock Engineering and Technology, Zone Six, and the Zone Six Reapers. 
and of course Uberzati. All great sponsors. You'll hear about all, hear about them all tonight. You'll hear about best private investigations. A lot, of, a lot of partners that come to support youth and high school sports, and we couldn't be more thankful for their support. Yep, and you know, you look over right now across the county, Melbourne trails at halftime to Park Vista 10-3 to uh, as they look for an update on the other game tonight on the Brevard Sports Network, Palm Bay and Umatilla. It is 20-0, Palm Bay on top in the second quarter. We were listening over to that game during our weather delay, and it sounds like, you know, Palm Bay is getting suited up and ready for a a big season. I, I I have high expectations for this team, and I think they could uh, they could achieve a lot. You know, look, they have returning at the helm the legendary coach Dan Burke taking over the helm at Palm Bay. And when you have a guy like Dan Burke in charge, you know if there's one thing, it will be a smooth run operation, and it will be an operation based on discipline, discipline, discipline football. I love watching his teams compete. I, I I've gone back and watched a couple, you know, some some of his early early tapes of those that Palm Bay State Championship team, and it's just watching a well-oiled machine work under him is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, again, Palm Bay they got you know a stifling defense as always, but again, you get that new coach coming in or this season, so we'll see what happens for Palm Bay. I, again, I think they're a team that is trending up in this county. Um, I mean, there's a lot of those right now, them, Titusville. It's hard to say this team's trending up when they're already at the top, but Coco again. Um, and just a lot of teams, a lot of new look teams this year. Teams like Satellite, Melbourne, just teams that kind of have, well, as I said, a new look. You know, a lot of new players that they've had some key players depart, but they're going to bring some key new ones in. So uh, with that, we'll head to the National Anthem. We'll be back in just a moment for the start of this game. Welcome back, everybody, here to O'Galley High School. Our game getting set to begin here between the O'Galley Commodores and the John Carroll Catholic Rams. Um, now, as I was talking about this year, Brevard County football would be interesting. We'll see who emerges of the top teams in the county. O'Galley, a candidate, uh, among many others. But it's it's going to be an interesting year. You know, one of the teams I'm looking forward to this year and seeing seeing if you know they can take that next step, if they can take that next step forward, the Titusville Terriers and Coach, well, Coach John Holmes is starting down there at that, or I say down there, up there at that program is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of positive things that they're getting a lot of those players who, who played on that Titusville National Championship 14U squad pouring in, in, you know, staying with the program. If that's true, that could be a really dangerous team in the future. Yeah, I mean, they're coming off an incredible bounce-back season, making the playoffs. 
Uh, another team I'm looking forward to is the Heritage Panthers. They peaked at the right time at the end of last year. They had the start of their season kind of derailed the playoff hopes, but you peak at the right time, you roll into this season with some returning players, Heritage could be one to watch as well. You know, and with Heritage, you you know, you don't talk Heritage without coach, without a new head coach, Michael Benson, and uh, assistant coach, Eddie Mays. They also keep their former head coach. His name is eluding me at the moment. and I Coach Ainsley. There we go. Hey, coach Ainsley. I was making sure Jackson was paying attention. That's exactly what I was doing. Coach Ainsley is brought back as the defensive coordinator, which is scary when you think about how good of a defensive coach he is as uh, the coin toss gets ready to get happen here. Got some players out there for O'Galley. You got number seven, Delvonte Williams. Number 16, TJ Robinson. Number 19, Dawson Barbero. Number 20 is Willie Lewis. And I believe number 72 is Sandman Thompson. That would be uh, correct. All right. Can't see the numbers for John Carroll yet. I'll try and get you those when I can. Uh, as we're getting set to go here, again, the coin toss getting ready between these two teams. For those who don't know, in this kind of a spring game, doesn't count for record. This isn't the start of the season yet, but it is a little scrimmage before, you know, everyone heads to summer break to kind of get the get the best look at your team before you head off on uh, summer conditioning and then come back ready for the kickoff classic and the season to begin. O'Galley will receive, or uh, John Carroll will, will receive the ball to start the second half or to start start the game, O'Galley will receive in the second half. All righty, with that, O'Galley gets set to take the field down in their end zone as John Carroll heads to the sideline. And there they are right there. Here, the Commodores getting pipe, getting hype, getting hype, and here they come. As O'Galley led by head coach Chris Sands for John Carroll, they're led by sixth year head coach Mickey Grudy with a 37 and 17 record in his career. So two very solid, respectable head coaches. As we get set to go, no kickoff here it looks like. So that's right. And typically most spring games you, you, you don't see a, a kickoff. Each team starts at 25-yard line. First down and 10. John Carroll will start on offense here. Uh, the trot out here is going to be first and 10. Rams at their own 25-yard line. The quarterback is, I believe, number two, Jake Whiteley. Whiteley in the gun with the running back. Number five, Tony Colebrook. Man in motion. Uh, to try the hard count, whistles. And we're going to have offsides. They get O'Galley to jump in the first play of the game. Uh, successful hard count for the Rams. Now to be first and five at their own 30-yard line. Looks like number 75 is a guilty party. Merrick Campbell, first down and five. John Carroll at their own 30-yard line. Again, the quarterback, Jake Whiteley, in the gun. Brings him in in motion once again. It's number eight, Jacob Morales. And he also sends his running back out of the backfield. That's who will hit with a quick pass out of the backfield, turning it up down the sideline. And it's a quick first down for John Carroll Catholic from Jake Whiteley to Tony Colbrook on a wheel route. I like that play there. You just move him out of the backfield and it looked like he was ready to throw that one. It's kind of like a less suspecting like a halfback toss you almost see out of that. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that swing pass kind of trying to draw the, the linebackers up and trying to draw the safeties up early on. First down and 10, John Carroll Catholic at their own 40-yard line already. Here after a gain of 10 yards there. Whiteley throwing again on an out route. It is hauled in near the sideline for a decent gain there. Numbers hard to read across the field. Believe that was number eight. 
I thought it was number one. Either way, yeah. either it's either Rob Jones or Jacob Morales making the grab on the far side for the Rams. Man in motion. They give it to him. Big hit in the backfield with a flag down. Huge play, blowing him up right down the middle, number 20. Brandon Brown, he got an offer from Maryland today. <laughs> and I see what the Terrapins saw in that one. I mean, he, he got off first step, but... There's a flag down quickly uh, at the start of the play. As they were looking for the jet sweep, they being John Carroll Catholic, but they're going to move forward now. Coach Sands confused at the call. Giving his two cents, but refs don't care too much for it as trying to see the call here it comes. It's going to be an offside. Or it's going to be on John Carroll, so... I don't know what Coach Sands was upset about, but I'm assuming it wasn't about the call in the field. Well, well, it, it, it might have been the explanation. Like, he, 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 he wasn't understanding the explanation of the call, possibly. That brings up second down and 11 for the Rams now back at their own 39-yard line. As they turn to the sideline to get the play. Jake Whiteley. Play fakes, turns, swings to the near side this time. Trying to bounce it outside. Not going to get far. That was Jacob Morales as O'Galley makes a good tackle in open space by TJ. TJ Robinson makes the play. Third down and eight now for John Carroll at their own 42 yard line. The drive started out good, penalty sets them back. Now they're pushed into a third and long. The thing is, they've passed mostly most of this drive. They ran one time and it didn't go well. Whiteley drops back, third and eight, flushed out of the pocket quickly, and he'll be dropped for a sack by number 10. Josh Roberts makes the play for the O'Galley Commodores, and that's going to force a punt out of John Carroll on their opening drive. Great job there by, num by number 10 to come around and get him at the ankles. If you always you swipe at the quarterback's ankles and get him tripped up, can't set anything up. Great job on the rush. Roberts with the sack there for a loss of three, and John Carroll now will be forced to punt here on their opening drive. Started out nice, penalty sets him back, and they just couldn't dig out of it. As out must there. the punt. Luckily, no one's chasing it. As it'll be a clean punt, a good one, end over end, spiraling down, and it's going to be muffed by O'Galley. And fallen on by number 23, Caleb Pusey. And now first down, Commodores. You know, spring game, there's no, there's going to be no rush on punt. There's no rush on, on extra point attempts. You know, again, kind of going through the motions of the game. But now we get to see this O'Galley offense after that defense put on a great Great way to start the game for the Commodores. Starting at it, quarterback form will be sophomore Jay Latz. And as we mentioned, we may see a little bit of Brody Grantland later on. But for now, it's Jay Latson at the helm for O'Galley with split backs in the backfield. First down, they'll turn and hand it off right up the middle. John Carroll Catholic with a good defensive stop there on Delvonte Williams with a carry. This O'Galley team, extremely young. I see no seniors on this roster. That's From what I can see, zero seniors this year. So, I mean, if O'Galley turns in a great season and you can return everybody, this could be a little little run O'Galley can start here this season. As another handoff. No, it's a read option right up the middle. Latson breaks through. First down O'Galley had me faked out. That's a gain of... Just under 20 yards. Latson doing a good job reading that one all the way to the end. Uh, John Carroll took the bait. Great job stepping up and, and waiting to the absolute last second. Latson faked a Welch. This time hands up the middle with the number seven again. Delvante Williams has a short run up the middle. Solid gain of about five or six yards. It's going to bring up second down and manageable now for the Commodores. Good ball movement early on, just strictly through the run game. It's going to bring up second down and five. Second down here, turn, handoff. 
And trying to get around the edge as well. She cuts back inside. Tumbling towards the line to gain. See where they spot it. That was Latavius Welch. I think he might be just short here. I think they're going to call him a yard short here. Third nope. down. Nope. Never mind. That was, a, that was a bit of a late first down call. First down and 10. O'Galley at their own 41-yard line. Solid movement to the drive. This is about where we saw John Carroll stall out. So we'll see if... Uh, the same happens here. Good movement. Welch cuts through. Gap right down the middle of the field. Latavius Welch with a big run up the middle for a gain of about 30. First down O'Galley already in the Rams territory up to the John Carroll 32-yard line. 7-16 left to go here in quarter number one. And I love the fact that O'Galley has gone right to that, that run. And through the middle nonetheless. First down and 10 split backs with Latson. As turn give again up the middle. This time not going anywhere as they're looking at Delvante Williams. They got a good split back system as well with Latson's athleticism. As you're seeing him being able to run with three different players. They're n number seven for John Carroll on the, the first on the scene. That would be Josh Reynolds. I mean, he, he, he came up, met him straight in the hole, and took him to the ground solo. A loss of one. It'll be second down and 11 for O'Galley. As they get set here, six and a half minutes to go in quarter number one, almost halfway done here. Uh, some uh, long-winded O'Galley drive setting up, run up the middle with a new back, number zero, bouncing off some tacklers, but he's still going nowhere. That was Emmanuel Small, and that's going to bring up third and long. Uh, do you think we see O'Galley go to the passing game here? I I do. I I think O'Galley is going to open it up a little bit. I think you kind of have to. I think that the defense is starting to kind of feel out that run game a little bit more, and I think they're going to have to at least give it a try you, here. You only got one high safety for John Carroll. Latson drops, throwing over the middle. That ball looks like it might be tipped, and it's intercepted. By John Carroll Catholic inside the 20. And maybe the pass wasn't the best move there on third down and long. I don't know if that was tipped, but definitely didn't come out exactly how Latson wanted it. And that ball intercepted by John Carroll Catholic. And look, he, he, he had the swing pass that, that would have easily picked him up a first down. And, you know, again, that's what a spring game is going to teach you. You know, now you, you've got it on film, in-game action. Chris Sands, you know, that'll be one that'll be looked back, you know, Hey, your first read is, is the swing pass right there. And he, he immediately locked eyes with the receiver and tried to take the shot downfield. I like the confidence, but, you know, when your first read is to go to that swing pass and it's that open, you're going to be hard convincing a coach. Hey, coach, I, I was feeling confident. Yes, but you had a wide open swing pass that would have gotten us the first down and continued the drive. I wish I could have got the number of the man who got the interception, but those... Those jerseys, those yellow on white, not yeah. the easiest to read <laughs> far side of the field. Um, but regardless, it's an interception and a turnover. John Carroll takes over. First down and 10 of their own 50. And their first drive showed a little bit of light, but then uh, kind of got shut down by the O'Galley defense. So with 5.46 to go in the first quarter, we're back with John Carroll Catholic on offense. First and 10. Whiteman, quick drop, rolls out right. He's going to look to take off a little flip pass at the last moment. Falls incomplete. <laughs> Sorry, that's White Lee. Uh, the quarterback, Jake Whiteley, there with the incompletion there. And that's, that was a little bit of an indecisive play. I think he was confident rolling out. Uh, one of the linebackers of the corners kind of pulled up on, and he uh, tried to flip pass at the last minute. The receiver definitely wasn't ready for it. I think he had already turned around the block for him. But So anyway, incomplete pass, second down and 10, coming up now for John Carroll Catholic at their own 15-yard line. As They've been the opposite of O'Galley so far, majority of passing the football not really liking the run. Whiteley again to pass. Throwing through the hands of his receiver. Dangerous ball to drop in the middle of the field as it falls incomplete. And that's going to bring up a quick third down and 10 for John Carroll Catholic. Intended receiver looks like number four possibly, which is Chauncey Williams. Which it went right through his hands. Pass a little high. But a penalty called on O'Galley. Oh, well, never mind. First down. John Carroll as they get the lucky break on the O'Galley penalty. 
as didn't see what the call was, but it is on O'Galley. So first down and 10, John Carroll now it's a 10 yard penalty, so it sets them up now at their own 25 yard line, just over halfway through the first quarter. Whiteley bring him, brings them in in motion. O'Galley stacking this right side of the defensive line a little bit, showing blitz as Whiteley, here comes that blitz, it comes off the backside for a sack by Emmanuel Small, and that's exactly who I was watching. He was creeping up slowly on the right side of this line. He had a delayed rush and then took off, curved right through, missed or dodged the running back block and got right on the quarterback for a huge loss. That's going to bring up second down and 15 now for John Carroll Catholic at their own 25-yard line. Listen, that's a, little, that's a little bit of a wrinkle you're going to see on defense. O'Galley's not going to be afraid to blitz, and I, this is going to be a fun defense to watch. I mean, that's the third time they've gotten a tackle for loss. Rolling out left, throwing on the run. It's hauled in on the near sideline, and that's going to be enough for a John Carroll first down. Good play there by the Rams from Whiteley to Caden Johnston, Johnson for a first down. Well, you needed 15. They get more than that right there. Good play call by John Carroll Catholic for the first down. And, and, and that's also a good job by the quarterback, uh, Whit Whiteley. Reading, taking what the defense is giving him, letting his athlete go make a play. First down, throwing to the outside. That one's overthrown towards the sideline, incomplete. That'll bring up second down and 10 for the John Carroll Catholic Rams moving the ball nicely though up to their own 45 yard line this time. I'd like to thank BlackRock Engineering and Technology. BlackRock Engineering and Technology's team of cybersecurity software networking engineers and, st and strategic leaders are direct. They do not shy away from providing what they think will work the best for your organization. Information is at the bottom of your screen. BlackRock Engineering and Technology. So we got a Pass here to the outside. It's hauled in for a short gain. Great defense in there. Number 10 making the play again. It's Josh Roberts. We got a question in the comments. Uh, Greg Karn says, Go Commodores. What's our prediction of their record this season? I don't have their schedule right in Wait. front of me, but I can say I think this team can be just as good as last year. Keep pushing that 6, 7, 8 win mark. I think this O'Galley team, as young as it is, if they can figure out all their positions, figure out who they want at quarterback, and etc., this defense is strong enough. They have talent, Sandman, Thompson, Brandon Brown. I see O'Galley being able to replicate uh, some of their recent success. Throwing on the run again by Whiteley through the hands of his receiver for what would have been a first down on the near side. Uh, looking for Jacob Morales, it falls incomplete. And once again, I think the Rams are going to be forced to punt from decent territory. You know, this O'Galley defense right now is showing a bend, don't break type of mentality. You know, they gave him a first down, and uh, but then that defense relocked in and uh, made the stops when they needed. So that's going to bring up the punt team again for John Carroll Catholic. And from decent territory. They make it up to their, about their own 47-yard line here. Nearing that uh, middle of the field no man's land. But they're going to punt it again. This one not as pretty as the first punt as it wobbles, backspins. That is no galley bounce as they're going to start now at their own 39-yard line. And the first drive was over mostly positive until the interception in the red zone. That wasn't ideal, but... Now you come back, you learn from those mistakes, and we'll see uh, how O'Galley does here on their second drive of the game with three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. BlackRock will collaborate with you and challenge the traditional norms in, or in order to orient an organization to a mindset of forward thinking to seize the vision. Information is at the bottom of your screen. Again, BlackRock Engineering and Technology. First down and 10, O'Galley at their own 39-yard line. It's going to be another quarterback keeper by Latson, but he's brought down quickly there by number nine. Laying the hit, that is TJ Alford. And now it's going to be second down and eight for O'Galley. As helmet comes off there for uh, the Maze Pitt, so he'll have to come off the field. They send out Merrick Campbell. Uh, it's going to bring up second down and eight for O'Galley here. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. As they run it up the middle here. And breaks free once again in space. And he's going to get ripped down there after a solid gain. That's Latavius Welch once again up the middle. 
making the play for O'Galley as they move it up back into John Carroll territory to the 40-yard line. And I like I like the call tempo. Get up to the line. Let's let, let's keep this momentum rolling. Don't don't let uh, John Carroll get their wits about them. Welch, a short and shifty back. I, I, I love watching him run the football. As they run it up the middle again with a different back. He doesn't go anywhere this time. That's number seven, Delvante Williams on the carry. As we said, we've seen three, four guys carry the football tonight for O'Galley, shaking it up. Some working better than others. Again, Latavius Welch has had a good night so far already. Um, but a decent carry there. Uh, that one gets stopped for only a gain of one. So it's going to be second and nine. O'Galley now from the John Carroll 40. As I believe rain may be beginning to fall here, as I see a bunch of umbrellas going up. Yeah. Oh, we figured that, that we figured the rain was coming. As long as the lightning stays away, we're good. Second down and nine. O'Galley turn give right up the middle to Welch. He's going to get ripped down for a loss there by number nine. That's T.J. Alford again. Is the John Carroll defense? That's the thing. The run game is good. But eventually, when you run it over and over and over, that's, I feel like, a very great rushing attack. When you run it over and over, can be adapted to more than the passing attack at times. Um, so you see that kind of by John Carroll. Third and ten. O'Galley had the interception on their first pass attempt. They won't go there here on third and ten. Welch breaking through the middle again. Welch cutting forward. First down and more down the sideline inside the 20. And as I say that, Latavius Welch <laughs> says... Screw that. First down, O'Galley inside the Black Rock red zone here. As it's a great carry again by Latavius Welch. Broke a few tackles, takes it to the near side, and uh, shows the strength of the O'Galley rushing attack as he's got to be already near 100 rushing yards. I would say we're, we're talking at, at, at least over 50. Oh, yeah. Well, he had a 30-yard run earlier, 20-yard earlier on this drive. That's about 20. Somewhere around the realm of 70 as they run it straight up the middle again. That is Emmanuel Small carrying the pile for a gain of about five. It's going to be about second down and five now for O'Galley at the John Carroll 10 with a minute to go in the first quarter. We got that. I got a score update. Palm Bay leads Umatilla 40 to zero in the second quarter. Oh, Palm Bay really flexing their muscles tonight. And 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 if you know Dan Burke, that's pure strength. Latson turns, gives again to Small. He's ripped down in the backfield by number seven on the play, Josh Reynolds. It's hard. One run for O'Galley will go for no yards or a loss. The next one goes for 30 yards. This game right now is a, it's a tug of war, and it's hard to see who's winning it. I mean, I, I, I'd say O'Galley's winning it because they're having more positive plays than negatives. That one looked like there was a missed assignment there. Someone missed a block because there's no way that gap should have been shot like that. As we have no galley timeout with 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. We get Caleb with a word with our sponsors. Again, BlackRock will collaborate with you. They will challenge the traditional norms in order to orient an, an organization to a mindset of forward thinking in order to seize their vision quickly. Without the fluff, without wasted time, BlackRock offers clear direction complete with comprehensive solutions to your trusted advisor and partner in your success. When other companies provide vague direction, BlackRock provides the engineering to give you tangible success. For more information, log on to www.blackengtech.com or give them a call at 321-428-3688. Again, it's BlackRock Engineering and Technology. I'd like to give a shout out and congratulations to the Coco Girls 4x100 win the state championship. So congratulations, congratulations to the Coco Girls 4x100 runners for their state championship. Back to back. Third down and eight. They're going to run a little jet touch pass and John Carroll's ready for it. They gave it to Makai Biggs. But the defensive front for the Rams pushes back hard and that's going to bring up fourth down and about eight now for... O'Galley inside the red zone, inside the 15. We'll see what the play call is here as the time running out here on quarter number one. Um, I don't know if they're going to get a playoff here. I don't think they will. So that'll do it for our first quarter here from O'Galley. Our score is still all tied up, 0-0, zero to zero, as it's going to be fourth down and eight coming up from O'Galley inside the red zone. All right, we'll be right back.
We head into quarter number two here at O'Galley. like to thank our sponsor, Solutions Property Management. Purchasing, purchasing an investment property in Florida provides an opportunity to make a reasonable return on your investment. At Solutions Property Management of Florida, they understand that you have specific goals in mind when you run out of property and offer the tools you need to accomplish your goals. Solutions Property Management focuses on maximizing your returns on an investment by maintaining your property and placing the right tenants. They recognize the importance of clear standards when working with tenants, and they provide a personal touch that allows them to connect with your tenants and keep them happy with the property. Let Solutions Property Management provide the tools you need to maximize your returns. Allow their team to handle any emergencies or problems that may arise when a tenant rents your investment property. Their information is at the bottom of your screen. As we get set for a big fourth down and long for O'Galley inside the 15, and they are going for it. The first drive ended in, in an interception inside the 20. We'll see if they can capitalize this time. Um, on fourth down and eight for O'Galley at the John Carroll Catholic 14-yard line. Latson moves him out of the backfield, rolls out right. Rowland looking to throw. Good blocks. Latson turns the corner. He'll be thrown out of bounds by the John Carroll defense for a turnover on downs as the John Carroll Catholic Rams make another key defensive stop on O'Galley inside their territory as it looked like number 11 made the play. Uh, True Smith on the far side. Not for sure there, but that's what it looked like to me. But again, making a big play. Uh, by the Rams defense great close down defense Smith if that's who it was Smith coming across the field from the back side of the play too great closing speed able to throw Latson out of bounds and keep him from getting the first down so with that stop we're going to switch hands again back for John Carroll in their third drive of the game now they're going to try running the ball here up the middle not getting too far there a decent gain on the carry by number five uh, Tony Colebrook on the carry. Senior running back for the Rams. Now we're talking about O'Galley being a very young team. John Carroll, the complete, well not the complete opposite. They have a decent amount of sophomores, but more juniors and seniors as well. So a little bit of an older team here as they're going to bring up second down and about five here early on, early on in quarter number two. Handoff right up the middle again. Nice broken tackles pushing towards the first. Colebrook still going. And that's going to be a first down for John Carroll past the O'Galley 25, past their own, rather, 25-yard line. First down, John Carroll. So first down and 10. John Carroll at the your own 28-yard line. Again, in the gun is quarterback Jake Whiteley. Running back is Tony Colebrook. First down and 10, Whiteley to throw, throwing deep down the sideline. Doesn't have a man open and is intercepted by number 19 on the near side, Dawson Barbaro. And it's going to be first down O'Galley as they pick up the first turnover of the game as that one he lofted it up down the sideline. His guy was, he was like, I'm not, I'm he, not open. He, he, he ran the receiver's route for him and uh, completed the catch for him. You know, Great. He, if the quarterback throws that one short and he comes back and gets it, that's a big game. But instead, you throw it long on top of the fact that he was already covered uh, by Barbero. And that's just a that, – that one looked easy for O'Galley as they're going to pick up the turnover, start first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. As the deep ball by Whiteley is intercepted. And O'Galley starts back over on offense with 10.40 to go in the first half. Score still tied to 0-0. Zero, zero. They're going to run right up the middle here. Pushing ahead. That's a good gain on first down by Delvante Williams. Second down and five now for O'Galley. Turn give right up the middle to Welch. Welch stuffed for a short gain of about one. And just like that, John Carroll forces a third down and three now for O'Galley at their own at their own 45-yard line. Third down and three. Split backs with Latson in the gun. 
Klatsen turns, play fakes, throwing deep down the sideline, has a man wide open, goes right through the hands of Dawson Barbero, who nearly got an interception, then a touchdown, and that looked identical to his interception, except he's on the offensive side this time. And and and, and that's one he's going to want back. Look, when, when you get your fingertips on it like that, you got to come up with that ball. That one a little out in front, but it, as you said, if you get your hands on it, I mean, you're that far out front, it's it's tough to watch it hit the ground. Fourth down and three, but we've already seen O'Galley not afraid to go for it. They 0 for 1 on fourth downs tonight as we got whistles and a timeout coming from John Carroll Catholic with 9.45 to go in the second quarter as they take their first time out of the half. Again, we'd like to give another shout-out to another one of our sponsors, Best Private Investigations. It would be fantastic if people were completely honest and things like fraud, deception, and impropriety didn't exist. Unfortunately, this is the real world and not everyone plays nice or lives above the board. Because of this, it's sometimes necessary to seek outside investigative services. A competent private investigative agency, Best Private Investigations, can uncover information, build a case, and provide necessary documentation to help you with a wide range of scenarios. And a full-service detective agency, they will... They are well-versed in handling domestic investigations, criminal cases, and straightforward surveillance. For more information, contact them at Best Private Investigations over the phone, 321-508-4492, or visit them online at www.bestprivateinvestigations.com. Big fourth down here from O'Galley at their own 45-yard line. Fourth down and three. Split backs with Jay Latson in the gun. Here it comes. Latson turns, gives, looking for the corner. And Welch is brought down for a huge loss immediately by number nine, TJ Alford. And for the third straight drive for O'Galley, it ends in a turnover. TJ Alford, again, shot out of a cannon. He he went to where the running where where Welch was going. He, he, he didn't go to try to meet him. He went to the spot that Welch was trying to turn the corner at and popped him. And I also think that they might have just guessed that play because I think they've been seeing how great Welch has been, even with split backs, three ways that could have gone. And they guess on Welch. They send uh, Alford. He's made a few good plays tonight and make a big one there. And now with that being in the turnover on downs, John Carroll starts in their best territory of the night as they start at the O'Galley 45 with nine and a half minutes to go in quarter number two with a big opportunity to score. Neither team has scored yet. As you see on the best private investigation scoreboard. They fake the jet sweep, run straight up the middle, and it's a solid gain for about five on first down by Tony Colebrook as you get kind of a inside run off the, the fake jet. That's one where you can kind of sometimes pull the defense to that far side watching that move and then hit it up the middle. It, it was it was, it was was mildly successful there, solidly successful the game of about five. O'Galley's had a lot of success with that today. Second down, they run it again. This time they're going to throw it to the man in motion. He's got to get back up to the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be a loss of one. Stopped by Xavier Lloris. And that's going to bring up third down and about six. And that time they went with a different route. They throw to it, uh, sort of like a swing pass. Uh, he had to, like, he stumbled trying to catch it, so he uh, had a little bit more ways to go. We, we, we saw Xavier Larice playing baseball for the Commodores, hit his first high school, or uh, his second high school home run here on BSN. He, he he's hit one he's hit one before before we that broadcast but we got his uh, his second one and uh, it, it it was just fun to to watch him and his fa father smiling over that one second down and or should be third down and five that ball great coverage by O'Galley falls incomplete uh, that's gonna bring up fourth down and five for John Carroll at the O'Galley thirty five yard line. It was Jay Latson in coverage. Quarterback going both ways here. Fourth down and five for John Carroll. They have that great field position. I don't doubt that they go for it here. They will. As we got whistles. I think they're looking over at the, um, the down marker on the far side. It says three. There you go. Fourth down and five. Here we go. Fourth down. Wasn't caught till the, P till the P PA guy said it was third down. <laughs> Well, I think John Carroll was planning for third down, and they're looking over, <laughs> talking to coach like, "Hey, 
We got to we got to get this. Hey, if we're doing this, we got to do it now. Fourth down and five. Rams at the Commodores 35. Still trying to figure out the play. 8.49 to go in the first half. Whiteley turns. Tip to the line of scrimmage. Intercepted for a second straight drive by O'Galley. This time it is Caden Davis, the junior, with the interception. And just like that, O'Galley gets right back onto the offensive side of the ball. Tip ball drill. You, pract you, you When you practice it, it shows on the field. Great job D for a D lineman getting his hands up and tipping that one off target. And then uh, Cade Davis following that ball and coming down with the interception. Second straight drive that uh, O'Galley is able to make that happen with the interception. And this one right now is a defensive slugfest. But uh, O'Galley's been able to move the ball better than John Carroll, I would say. But the problem is they haven't been able to finish these drives off. So we'll see if they can here before halftime. Still 8.40 to go before half. First down and 10, O'Galley at their own 35-yard line. As it's going to be a quick drop for Latson. Passing game hasn't done too well for him. Rolls out. There's a flag down around the secondary. Latson breaks free. Breaks another tackle. As he'll be just short of the first down as is. But that seeing a flag in the secondary like that, that could be a defensive holding. Pass interference on a defensive. So this could be even more for O'Galley. It's going to be a face mask on John Carroll. So tack on 15 more. Even better than either of the options I said. As that's going to be a big play now for O'Galley. You tack 15 on the 9. That's a gain of 24 at, uh, after it's all said and done. Or, well, it'll be 15, I guess, from the... From the line of the initial line of scrimmage, or it could, could, could have been five, I guess the five yard variety. Anyway, first down and ten now. O'Galley at the fifty as they're going to push forward for a solid gain up the middle on the carry by number one. That is Latavius Welch. We're going to bring up second down and six for O'Galley at now the John Carroll forty six. I believe every driver there so far has been into the Rams territory. But you still see the zero on the scoreboard showing how the Rams have been resilient. Ben, don't break. Split backs, run straight up the gut. Pushing forward. Helmet comes off. I thought that was the ball for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a solid gain up towards the line to gain. We'll see where they mark them with forward progress. Delvante Williams on the carry just short. Third down and one for O'Galley trying to hurry up. And we got whistles. Yeah, I don't understand why we had to wait on the substitutions. And we got more whistles here. As now we'll get a timeout. Number two of the half by John Carroll Catholic with seven and a half minutes to go in the second half as they try and avoid that uh, quick tempo offense by O'Galley. As we get a read from our sponsors. Yeah. Yes, we will. Just one quick second. How about zone six? Zone 6 Reapers were founded in 2021 with the vision to create an organization that would give student-athletes the off-season conditioning, fundamental skills, and mentoring opportunities leading to success in high school, college, and beyond. With a shared vision from around the community, Zone 6 was formally incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit organization in January of 2021. To register for more information, please visit their website at www.z6reapers.com or you can visit them on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Zone 6 Reapers. Third down and one O'Galley. Turn, give to Welch and flying in the backfield is number seven, Josh Reynolds, as John Carroll Catholic continues to come up clutch in those third and fourth down moments. And now that's going to bring up fourth down and about four for O'Galley back at the John Carroll 49. They're still going to go for it. We'll see if John Carroll can come up big again defensively or if O'Galley can finally get it. I believe they're 0 for 2 now on fourth down tries in the game. Fourth down and four. Latson's going to throw it. Blitz immediately up the middle. And Latson's dropped. And for the third straight drive, it's a turnover on downs. John Carroll Catholic... They're making it count when it matters, and I believe in their, the ringleader of the bunch was T.J. Alford as that was just a quick all-out blitz straight up the middle, 
That team is not afraid to blitz, and that's what's keeping them all tied up at zero. First down and 10, John Carroll at the 50-yard line. 6.50 to go in the second quarter. And it's first down and 10. John Carroll at, as I said, the 50-yard line. Man in motion. They fake the give, run up the gut, and he's blown up for a big loss. There's a new quarterback in the game now for John Carroll Catholic. Number 19 comes in. So the new quarterback is senior Shea Hartnett. With the carry there stuffed for a loss of about three by the O'Galley defense. You know, look, you have a court, you have your, your starting quarterback throw two interceptions. It's time to see, you know, who else you got out there. You know, give somebody else an opportunity to show what they got. Second down and 13. Man in motion. Hartnett throws. Swing pass out of the backfield. Now you let the running back make a play. And he's going to go pretty much nowhere there. Great stop again by O'Galley. That's going to bring up third down and long. Number 20 looks like he cleaned up that pile for O'Galley. Brandon Brown. That's a name you want to keep up with. Yeah. Third down and long is the refs. Uh, no forward progression there. They're going to call that one a loss. Fourth down or third down and 14. Hartnett checking the sideline for the play here. Five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Coach signaling out, third down and 14. Hartnett rolls out right, blitz coming from behind. Ayers one out, had a man on the sideline. It's caught, but he's out of bounds. As that was number one, uh, Rob Jones, the intended target. And it was a good it was a, a good route. He was open on the side. I think he led him a little too far out and uh, falls incomplete. And with that, it's fourth down and long. And once again, uh, John Carroll Catholic will be forced to punt. Probably the, the best pass we, we've seen all night. Uh, looks a little awkward in the mechanics. But uh, it almost looked like he was ready to take the shot deep and then and then realize, oh, he's not as far as I thought, I was, thought he, as I thought he was. There's the punt. That one, much like the first one with the spiraling down, and it's going to be caught on the run by uh, Xavier Lloris to down it. And that'll bring up first down and 10 for O'Galley. Keep talking about finishing these drives. First drive ends in an interception in John Carroll territory. The next three drives we've seen have been turned over on downs as the blitz by John Carroll Catholic has been brutal uh, on the O'Galley uh, backfield. And they got a block up front. You have, O'Galley has a good offensive line. Sandman Thompson up there among others. They got to find a way to block those blitzers, especially straight up the middle. It's something that I think can be remedied for O'Galley, but it's got to happen sooner. I don't know if they can score at the rate they're going unless they can kind of develop the passing attack to get past it because the running game on third and fourth down just isn't there. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Zone 6 Reapers for being a proud partner of the Brevard Sports Network. Coach uh, Lovitcher Jones does an excellent job with Zone 6, and we couldn't thank him enough for his generosity to supporting high school and First youth down sports. Down and 10, O'Galley split back, carry up the middle again. It is Delvante Williams for a solid game. We're talking to some coaches before the game. They're telling us they're going to play a very vanilla or basic offense, and that's what we're kind of seeing here. They're running the same sort of formations, the same sort of plays, they're not going to pull out too much tonight, which is fine in a spring game. But eventually, you might have to change a few things up because the way John Carroll is um, countering some of these runs. But that one is a solid gain. I mean, it's going to bring up second down and I would say manageable. Second down and five. Latson turns, gives again to Williams, who that time will be no gain on the play. 4.47 to go in the first half. It's going to bring up third down and short for O'Galley. And this could be the first drive of the night to end O'Galley in, or the second drive of the night to end them in their own territory. Um, but we saw John Carroll not go anywhere before in O'Galley territory. So, uh, again, so far it's been all defense from O'Galley. Uh, 
as here comes a run up the middle. And it's going to bring up fourth down and short as John Carroll defense making a stand. Fourth down and one. O'Galley still not punting. 0 for... I believe 0 for 3 on fourth downs tonight. As John Carroll's been ready for it. As actually, I might be wrong here. This No, this is a punt formation. It's a tight punt formation. I lied. Uh, anyway, a good punt there, and it'll be down by uh, Rob Jones. And now John Carroll takes over from their own territory. How dare you lie to the viewers. Gosh. I misspoke. <laughs> well, it was a tight punt formation. I've been... The John Carroll punts, they had the punter way back. They had, O'Galley had their punter kind of pressed in. Looked more like a, a quarterback. But, anyway, first down and 10 for John Carroll. Starting deeper in their own territory with 3.40 to go in the first half. First down and 10 for John Carroll Catholic at their own 30-yard line. Quarterback turns, tosses it to the near side, and he's not going to go far there. That's going to be no gain for the back, number five, Tony Colebrook. That one looked like kind of a hesitant toss. It, 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 it was meant to be a little uh, delayed, like make, make, making him think that quarterback might actually take a shot downfield, delayed toss. That's the word I was looking for. Delayed toss there. Uh, second down and 10 for John Carroll at their own 30. Quarterback dropping, throwing. Rifles one high. It's brought in right at the line to gain by number 12 making that play. Caden Johnson gets up for it. Hauls it in. First down John Carroll up around their own 40-yard line. He didn't take. He, he, he took maybe about one, maybe two-step drop there did the quarterback. And, uh, and and fired that one a little high. But, hey, good job having the athlete to go down and go up and go get it. Johnson makes the play. First down and 10. John Carroll at their own 40. 240 to go in the first half. They hand it off. And it gets a short gain, but not as much as you like on the run there. Once again by Tony Colebrook. Second down and eight. Quarterback rolls out to the left. Throwing. It is hauled in on the far side. Hit immediately. But he gets up closer to the line to gain on that one. And this is going to be third down and short for John Carroll with two minutes to go in the first half. It's going to be about third down and two. And the new quarterback in the game, as I said, Shea Hartnett. They're looking over the sideline, third down and two. Now around 2.05 to go in the first half. Fakes the give on the jet sweep, runs it up the middle, inching forward. It's going to be fourth down and one as O'Galley stands up. Tony Colebrook, fourth down and one for John Carroll at their own 49-yard line. See, this is an opportunity I like right here. You get under center, quarterback sneak. As the ball slips through behind. As Tony Colbrook scoops it up and picks up the first down on fourth down and one. And John Carroll keeps the drive moving. And now, I don't, and now when it just looked like the snap was muffed, rolled back, and Colbrook grabs it and goes with it. Quarterback Hartnett rolls out. That ball wobbly. Hauled in on the near side by number four, Chauncey Williams. As they keep it moving, a minute 20 to go in the half. As John Carroll looking to take a lead going into halftime. Second down. They, they, they said it was an incomplete. Okay. It's hard to see the sideline over here, but 
Looked like the ball was thrown inbounds, maybe spun out of bounds. Second down and 10. Hartnett rolls. Here comes a blitz. He looks right at it, throws. And there's going to be a flag down at the end of the play. In there was number 10, Josh Roberts. We'll see what the flag is here with a minute 13 to go. If it's, it, if it's for what I think it is, that's a little ticky-tacky. All right, it's not what I thought it is. It's going to be a flag on it's John Carroll Catholic. It's a, uh, I illegal per illegal personnel or uh, uh, illegal formation. All right. Third down and long now for John Carroll. It's going to be about a third down and 15. Now back in their own territory. Got to make a play here with the minute 13. We saw him convert a third down of this length earlier on. But the blitz coming hard, and he's going to go down as the O'Galley defensive front makes the play and makes the stop. And that's going to bring up fourth and long. John Carroll will be forced to punt as we got whistles. And it'll be O'Galley's second timeout of the half. Here with 58 seconds to go, they want to get the ball back and maybe turn it into some points. All right, while we have a timeout here, we also like to thank another one of our great sponsors. How about Uber Zadi again? If anyone knows BSN, they know we love being partnered up with Uber Zadi. Do you want to become faster, stronger, and more confident athlete? Uberzadi provides optimal environment for each athlete to realize its peak, their peak physical and mental performance via the use of high-speed treadmill training with propriety science-based protocols in combination with ground-based agility and strength training. John Carroll Catholic Inc. sets a punt here on fourth and long late in the first half. Here's the kick. That's a good spiral end over end. O'Galley will down it at about their own 30. As that's going to give them 50 seconds and one timeout to try and move down the field before halftime and get something to happen here. And uh, tonight's spring game action, 0-0, still in a very defensive battle here from O'Galley between the Commodores and the John Carroll Catholic Rams. We have two opposite games going on here. Uh, defensive struggle here down, down in uh, Palm Bay. Alan Logan broadcasting a uh, offensive firepower showcase by Palm Bay. Last update we had was 40 to nothing in the first half. First down and 10. O'Galley going to run right up the middle, get some space, breaking free on the outside. Welch down the sideline, past the 50, cutting back, and that's going to be a gain of about 25 by Latavius Welch. As he's having a big night, as I said, 41 seconds to go in the half. And unlike college football, high school staying with the clock stopping after the first down. So, Galley, we get a chance to make it up here to the ball. We got whistles. And it's going to be an official's timeout as Welch is down after that big run. Welch has had over 100 yards now in this half. Most definitely. Uh, BSN policy we do not show injuries do not speculate I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night nor did I drink a Dr. Pepper so trust me when I tell you I'm not a doctor Welch uh, walking off under his own power kind of light jog back to the sideline there a little bit of a limp First down and 10. Now for O'Galley and John Carroll territory. Clock starts to run under 40 seconds. They're going to run it right up the middle. Williams with space. Pushes forward to the line to gain. Nearing a first down is Delvante Williams. First down and 10 now for O'Galley near the John Carroll 35-yard line. Latson turns, gives again. Williams up the middle. He's still going. Charging inside, nearing the red zone here. 16 seconds. 
O'Galley has one timeout. And after a whole half of struggling to move, now down in this side of the field, we'll see if they can put it in with time uh, ticking. 13 seconds. Run straight up the middle. Again, digging is Emmanuel Small. He stopped, and O'Galley will take their last timeout of the first half with six seconds to go. As they're going to have really one more play, I think, to get this one in the end zone. And while we have a timeout, again, we'd like to talk to you more about Uberzadi. Uberzadi is the place for you. Uberzadi is a set of scientifically developed protocols that have evolved over the last 20 plus years of rapid, de rapidly developed athletes beyond their normal capabilities. Uberzadi is for the serious athlete. If this sounds like what you need, visit online at www.uberzadi.com. Or call Maximato at 321-412-5972. Information at the bottom of your screen. Quite possibly the final play of the first half. As uh, O'Galley enters that Uberzotti red zone. Second down and about seven. But what really matters is they're at about the 16-yard line. Latson keeps, rolls out right. Motioning the field, he slips down and around the 10. He's not going to get the first. And John Carroll Catholic makes the stop to head to halftime. All tied up, 0-0 zero to zero between O'Galley and John Carroll Catholic. Coming up here at halftime, absolutely nothing. We'll come back in about in about uh, 10 minutes with, uh, with a recap of the first half and tell you more about our great partners. Your halftime score, 0-0. Zero, zero.
All right, folks, we're just here at halftime. About still seven and a half minutes left to go. We had a 17-minute halftime. I'd like to tell you more about all of our great sponsors. Best Private Investigations. It would be fantastic if people were completely honest and things like fraud, deception, and impropriety didn't, didn't exist. Unfortunately, this is the real world. Not everyone plays, plays nice or lives life above the board. Because of this, it is sometimes necessary to seek outside investigative services. A competent private investigation, investigative agency, best private investigations can uncover information, build case, and provide necessary documentation to help you with a wide range of scenarios. And as a full-service detective agency, they are well-versed in handling domestic investigations, criminal cases, and straightforward surveillance. For more information on best private investigations, give them a call at 321-508-4492 or visit online at www.bestprivateinvestigations.com. How about BlackRock Engineering and Technology? BlackRock Engineering and Technology's team of cybersecurity software network engineers and strategic leaders are direct. They do not shy away from providing you with what they think will work best for your organization. BlackRock is certified Certified service disabled veteran owned small business as well as a minority owned business. BlackRock will collaborate with you. They will challenge traditional norms in order to orient an organization and a mindset of forward thinking in order to seize their vision quickly without the fluff, without wasted time. BlackRock offers clear direction, complete with comprehensive solutions as your trusted advisor and partner in your success. Where other companies only provide vague direction, BlackRock provides the engineering to give you the tangible success. For more information, log on to www.blackengtech.com or give them a call at 321-428-3688. I'd also like to give you information about Zone 6 and the Zone 6 Reapers. Zone 6 is a proud sponsor of BSN and fundraising is vital for the success of their program. The funds they collect aid in purchasing uniforms, equipment, and other pertinent expenses as well as keeping the cost of to our athletes and their families at a minimum. These funds will also help support programs with community at community outreach and assistance programs to further educate, inspire, and be a service to our local communities. Please consider donating or sharing via social media so that Zone 6 Reapers can reach their goal. Thank you so much for your support. For more information about how you can be a tremendous part of a student-athlete's success, visit www.z6reapers.com and then simply click the Donate tab at the top of the page. and Solutions Property Management. Purchasing an investment property in Florida provides the opportunity to make a reasonable return on your investment. At Solutions Property Management of Florida, they understand that you have specific goals in mind when you rent out a property, and Solutions Property Management offers the tools needed to accomplish your goals. Solutions Property Management focuses on maximizing your returns on investment by maintaining your property and placing the right tenants they recognize the importance of clear standards when working with tenants, and they provide a personal touch that allows them to connect with your tenants and keep them happy with the property. Let Solutions Property Management provide the tools you need to maximize your returns. Allow their team to handle any emergencies or problems that may arise when your tenant rents your investment property. For more information, give them a call or visit them online at www dot solutions rentals fl dot com or give them a call at three two one six eight three seven seven nine three we're about three minutes till kickoff of the second half jackson uh what what would you like from O'Galley there in that first half you know i saw i did see some good in that offense uh, despite a scoreless first half, I think de offensively Latavius Welch showing a lot of flashes in this game. I think he already has upwards of 100 rushing yards on the night, and uh, he's been really good defensively, though, as a whole. They forced two interceptions uh, defensively. They obviously uh, keep the offensive or a defensive. They pitch the first half shutout. 
Um, so I do think that O'Galley played solid in the first half. I do think offensively they obviously um, have to score. Uh, I think they do need to develop the passing attack a little more, uh, however way they can. But besides that, I think overall defensively they were strong in the first half, and the run game was there for for a while. But they gotta they gotta keep it gotta keep it moving. Two interceptions defensively tonight. Coach Chris Sands' defense coming up with two big turnovers. And, and, and you know, offensively, uh, O'Galley giving up two turnovers via the, via the interception as well. So it's going to come out to, to who can make the best play and least amount of mistakes. I think is what this is going to come down to here, scoreless. Minute and a half set till we start the third quarter as the referees coming coming out of the field, doing their little stretches, their little warm ups. Seventeen minute halftime for a spring game. And yeah, they'll they definitely be ready to go um, here in the second half. I hope. Congratulations to Palm Bay on picking up their victory in their spring game over Umatilla. 47-8, to eight and uh, Melbourne wrapped up theirs as well, losing tonight to, I believe, Park Vista, 17-5. to five. And an interesting score, but uh, Melbourne looking to build off of that. Um, new quarterback in there. They Obviously, Hunter Turner, the senior, last year he graduates. Uh, Brady Hart, their backup, he's at Coco right now, um, having turning a lot of heads there, so... Melbourne's going to have a new look team, and we'll see how they adapt this season. You know, look, they, they, they're going to have to try to make, make make the best out of the situation they have. Uh, they're not in a favorable situation, but if anyone can lead that team in a positive direction and get that team going, it is Coach David Kintai. As the teams head back to the sidelines, as halftime wraps up, our score... Yep, on the top of your screen, that is right. 0-0 zero, zero through one half here in the spring game. As it has been a defensive struggle here. O'Galley's moved into the red zone, I want to say three times, two or three, two at least, I think two times. And they are were held out of the end zone both times. John Carroll has struggled around the 40s, uh, inside those 40s at midfield, as uh, they haven't really been able to move farther than that. So we'll see uh, what... What happens here in the second half, see who makes the best halftime adjustments, see if some offense starts to come alive, or if this one's really just going to be who can score first. And here we go, Galley will have the first possession of the second half. As they start at their own 25-yard line, do they switch up quarterbacks? No. So we thought they may try here. Jay Latson will stay in at quarterback. Again, we were told that they may see some, some Brody Grantland. But uh, not yet, as they're going to start out turning it right up the middle. Williams with a good run to the near side, tumbling forward, nearly getting a first down on the first run of the second half. As that is number seven, Delvonte Williams. And he gets up hobbling. Or no, that was TJ Robinson, uh, the one that is slow to get up. The carry was by Williams. And so we get a quick official's timeout to check him out. There's a. All right, so we're turning the camera away. Two injuries on the field. John Carroll, Catholic, ram down, and a Commodore who hopped off to the sideline. 11.40 to go in the third quarter. Our score is still 0 all here uh, at Commodore Stadium. A nice Thursday night for football. As we're playing, uh, played keep away with the rain for a while there earlier on, but for now, uh, skies are clear, and it's a good night for football. It's second down and one for O'Galley at their own 34. They're going to run it straight up the middle again. That will be a first down. Not a long, not a long carry, but one that gets you what you need uh, by Williams once again. Delvonte Williams. Coming up tomorrow night, Bayside and Vieira, myself and Logan Pettit will be on the call for that spring game. Another spring game I know going on tomorrow night will not be live here, but 
It'll be Holy Trinity and Satellite. Uh, it's going to be split backs with Latson. He sends Welch out as they hand it off up the middle again to Delvante Williams. He will uh, push forward for a solid gain of about five. It's going to bring up second down and five for O'Galley now. Or more like second and three for O'Galley now at their own. 45-yard line looking up towards the 50 already here early on in the second half. But we've seen their problem hasn't been moving the ball. It's been finishing these drives. Delvonte Williams with a good run up the middle. First down once again for O'Galley past the 50 uh, into John Carroll territory. But again, as I said, not their issue hasn't been moving the ball. It's been finishing the drives off. So, so far they're, they're keeping the ball moving well. We'll see if they can carry this all the way. Uh, into the end zone uh, at the end of this drive as they move into John Carroll territory for first down and 10 at the Rams 47 yard line still early in the third quarter this game got started a little late due to mother nature that ball snaps short Latson picks it up he's getting chased really far back somehow escapes it and he's going to take it forward and the flag's going to come in late for the uh, horse collar tackle and what was a broken play that was almost a loss of 10 it turns into a solid gain and then what might be 15 more on the end of it. What a turnaround by Jay Latson and the O'Galley Commodores. Yep, and the horse collar is called. That's going to give O'Galley the first down there. Is again, a play that was broken from the start. Uh, Latson scooped it up, made space for himself, and then the 15 yards on the end is going to put him in really good territory. As it's going to be first down and 10 O'Galley at the John Carroll Catholic 25-yard line. They've made it in the red zone twice tonight, scoreless in both trips. So we'll see if they can make something happen this time on first down and 10. Not quite in the red zone yet, but they're knocking on the door. Split backs again with Latson, whistles early. And I believe this one's going to go on O'Galley as the sideline uh, of the Commodores. Oh, nope, no flag, just a... It's a respot. First down and 10. O'Galley still at the Rams 25. They move Welch out of the backfield. Turn give straight up the middle. Good move out to the left side by Delvante Williams. Now they'll be inside the red zone, the best private investigations red zone. And we got whistles. There's a flag down in the near side, though, so we'll see if they stay there. And that's going to be a personal foul on the defense well, both on both sides. So it's going to be offsetting. Not going to go anywhere with that. And that'll just bring up. They'll replay the down so it'll still be first and ten. First down and 10, O'Galley handoff, play fake, Latson over the middle, perfect throw, touchdown O'Galley. Jay Latson finds TJ Robinson perfectly over the middle of the end zone for a 25 yard O'Galley touchdown with 9.24 to go in the third quarter. Beautiful job, the receiver just getting open and, and Latson not overthrowing his receiver. Push it right in the bread basket. Play catch with him. And that was one of my notes after halftime. They got to get the passing attack going in some way, and that's just an easy throw to make when your man's that open. And there's the touchdown. The score goes on the board first for O'Galley. And they'll attempt the extra point. Number 20 is the kicker, Brandon Brown. As the kick is up, right through the uprights and good. And our score now, O'Galley 7, John Carroll Catholic 0. I don't think Brandon Brown's getting recruited to Maryland for kicking, but... You know, what can he do? <laughs> Add that to the resume. As there's the touchdown they needed on a 25-yard connection from Latson to Robinson for the score. Now Galley strikes first here early in the third quarter. They go ahead 7-0. to zero. No kickoff, so it'll be uh, John Carroll taking over now at their own 25 yard line and now they need to respond here quickly before O'Galley starts to turn this into momentum as they've struggled to move the ball uh, where O'Galley hasn't they haven't really had many good shots towards the end zone here um, 
they being John Carroll. So we'll see if they can set something up here on first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Quarterback drops, fires over the head of his receiver to the far side. They're going back to their original quarterback, uh, Jake Whiteley. And the first pass of the second half goes incomplete. That'll bring up second down and 10. You know, I think best private investigation for the partnership and continue to thank BlackRock Engineering Engineering and Technology. Second down and 10. They fake the jet sweep. Run straight up the middle. And O'Galley fires back quickly for a stop. And you know who the brick wall he ran into? Brandon Brown. I mean, Brandon Brown was ready to make the tackle, and, and the running back just ran into him like, like, you were, like you would run into a brick wall. Third down and long now for John Carroll Catholic. It's going to be a third and 13. Back to their own 22-yard line. As quarterback snap rolls out left. Whiteley looking to throw. Throws is intercepted for a third time on the far side. Flags come in after the play. It's Emmanuel Small with the interception. Perfect. He goes right to him, jumps the route, and it's intercepted. O'Galley takes over in great territory as they're trying to continue their heart, hot start to the second half. Pending the penalty. It's going to be a personal foul. Helmet to helmet on O'Galley. So I think that's going to be a first down for John Carroll. As... see who gets possession here. It was a personal foul on O'Galley. With eight and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter, there was an interception on the play by Small as they're looking like they're marching. Alright, so All right, first down O'Galley, but now they're pushed back 15, so they'll take over now at their own four, or at the John Carroll 40-yard line here with eight and a half minutes to go. They can get another touchdown here. They could really start to gap this one as this one playing out sort of like a softball game like we've seen recently where you start to get a run, a run or two here, O'Galley get a touchdown or two, and that's really, really where you can just start playing keep away with his lead with how defensive this game has been. First down and 10, O'Galley now at the John Carroll 42-yard line. As men in motion, they give it to him on the jet sweep, trying to get around the end, cuts up the middle for a... Short gain on first down. Gain of about three there. Doesn't and gets him just up past the 40. It's going to be second down and seven for O'Galley at the John Carroll 39-yard line. Man moved out of the backfield. Williams turn gives straight up the middle. That's a solid carry. Running him up near where they need to end up for the first down. That's Welch. Latavius Welch on the carry. Good to see him back in play. It's going to bring up third down and two for O'Galley at the John Carroll 34-yard line. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. That's someone with an air horn. Third down and two. Run. Blitz coming hard. And that John Carroll Catholic blitz coming in clutch again for a big stop. Number nine in there leading him again. TJ Alford once again tonight. And that pushes him all the way back. That's a loss of six. Fourth down and eight for O'Galley at the John Carroll 40. And we got an official's timeout for a John Carroll player down on the field here with 7.27 to go in the third. And uh, while we have this time to stop, we'll go ahead and give another shout out to another one of our sponsors, BlackRock Engineering and Technologies team of cybersecurity, software network engineers, and strat strategic leaders are direct. 
They do not shy away from providing you with what they think will work best for your organization. BlackRock is certified, service-disabled, veteran-owned, small business, as well as a minority-owned business. BlackRock will collaborate with you, and they will challenge the traditional norms to orient your organization to a mindset of forward thinking in order to seize their vision quickly, without the fluff, without wasted time. Complete with comprehensive solutions as your trusted advisor and partner in your success. Where other companies provide vague direction, BlackRock provides the engineering to give you tangible success. Information is at the bottom of your screen. Find them online at www.blackengtech.com or give them a call at 321-426-7292. Now it's fourth down and eight. O'Galley going for it again. They're yet to convert one tonight. Jay Latson in the gun looking for a play here. 7.20 to go in the third. He drops back. Blitz coming hot. And Latson is dropped for a big loss by number 23, Cole Bates. And it's going to be first down John Carroll in O'Galley territory. And I tell you, this blitz is going to be keeping John Carroll Catholic in it as O'Galley still hasn't found an answer for it. No, they have not. That's now 0 for 4 on fourth down for the Commodores. I mean, they're lucky they got that touchdown pass. When That's what I'm saying. If you get the passing attack, you're, that's how you kind of defeat a blitz is if you can get an open receiver. But running the ball, you can't stop it. Or even there where it looked like he was looking to pass. Oh, if it's not a quick pass, that one's you're going to go down every time. First down and 10. John Carroll at the O'Galley 48-yard line. They really would like to score on this drive to even up the score. As Whiteley is the quarterback once again here for John Carroll. We saw him in the first quarter through a few interceptions. He's thrown three now. He throws the swing pass out of the backfield. Now letting his receiver do the work. It's going to be a, a short gain for the Rams. Gain of about little. four. John Carroll's only found success with the, with those little swing passes, you know, sending the running back out into the flat and al allowing him to, to pick up yardage. Second down and about six for John Carroll at the O'Galley 45-yard line. 6.40 to go in the third. They trail by a touchdown and a PAT. Whiteley throwing over the top again. One-on-one. -on -one. It's swatted away. By number 19 in coverage, Dawson Babaro. He has an interception tonight, and he's playing good coverage on the deep ball. John Carroll wants it, you can tell, but I don't think O'Galley's going to give it to him easily. No. No, they are not. His defense is stout, and they not, would love to pitch a shutout. And that's a hard route to kind of telegraph. It almost looks like they were going to throw that regardless. It just really wasn't open for the second time. Last time they went deep, it was intercepted, so... Um, John Carroll having a hard time pinpointing the ball downfield. Third down and six. Jake Whiteley. Whiteley drops, throwing over the top again. Same play. Hit him in the hands. They had him that time as I say that, and it falls incomplete. And that's when you really want back. He put that right over the cornerback's shoulder into the receiver's hands, and it's dropped incomplete and that's going to bring up fourth down and six for John Carroll and they're going to be forced to punt from O'Galley territory that's a tough pill to swallow that one is finally get the deep ball to drop and well it is dropped and with uh, 624 to go in the third O'Galley's going to get the ball back uh, luckily with the hope that they can get some more points on the board and get through this John Carroll Catholic uh, rush High snap, getting ready to punt it. You really want to pinpoint him here. Don't want to kick it into the end zone. And it'll be downed by O'Galley at the 10-yard line. I would have let that one bounce. And again, another coachable moment. You know, Coach Sands will say, hey, you know, look, next time, let's take our chances and, and, and let it bounce in the end zone. That, that had a forward roll to it. As we have a break here, 6.15 to go in the third. O'Galley leads it 7-0. to zero. While we have this break.
Do you want to become faster, stronger, and more a more confident athlete? If so, then Uberzadi is the place for you. Uberzadi is a set of scientifically developed protocols that have evolved over the last 20 plus years to rapidly develop athletes beyond their normal capabilities. Uberzadi is for serious athletes. To get a hold of them, contact them online at www.uberzadi.com or call Maximato at 321-412-5972. As we head back to the field here, first down and 10 O'Galley at their own 10-yard line. Six minutes halfway through the quarter number three. O'Galley leads it 7-0. to zero. Uh, It's going to be a turn to give to Delvante Williams. Makes one broken tackle, turning it upfield. And I believe that should be enough for an O'Galley first down on the first down run by Delvante Williams. And he'll move the chains for another Commodore's first down. Great play there by Williams. Get him first. Williams and Welsh, I think, are going to be a good one-two punch combo for the Commodores this season. They're going to be one to watch across the county. Really get a two. If you get one and a two, one A, one B type running back thing where you don't really have one that's definitely better than the other. Deep ball here by Latson. Airs it out. It's hold in for a big gain. Once again, it's... Number 19, Dawson Barbero. First down, O'Galley. Latson finds Barbero for a gain of about 35. First down, Commodores into John Carroll territory. More of a gain of 40 as they get it up to the John Carroll 42 yard line for first down and 10. Beautiful pass. Putting it right where he needed to. First down and 10, O'Galley. Latson turns, gives up the middle. It's Welch. Breaks the tackle, pushing forward. That's going to be a gain of about seven. Is getting pulled back. Ball comes out. It was whistled down. So after it's all said and done, it's going to be a gain of seven. Second down and three, O'Galley at the John Carroll 35. Welch didn't appreciate being pulled by the leg after he'd been whistled down. Run up the middle by Williams, pushing towards the line to gain. I think he's going to get the first down here. It's going to be close. That's what I'm saying. You see that 40-yard completion. No, Galley can pass the ball and complement the running game. Their offense takes it up to another level. That's something I think if they can find this year, that's when I think they can really be good this year because their defense has proven to be strong tonight. O'Galley will pick up the first down thanks to Delvante Williams. First down and 10. O'Galley at the John Carroll 33 yard line. 4.49 to go in the third. Run again by Delvante Williams. Breaks a tackle. And he's going to get a short gain there up around the John Carroll 30. Uh, it's going to be a short gain, but it is only first down. So not too bad. And there's no Galley Commodore down on the play, I believe. And so he'll make his way off the field. As you get back to play, second down and nine for O'Galley at the John Carroll 31 yard line. As the Rams looking to make a stand here with four and a half minutes to go in the third. Play fake, they throw the swing pass out of the backfield. It's caught, breaking free, and he's gonna go all the way. Touchdown, O'Galley, 31 yards. As it's Emmanuel Small going the distance on a swing route from Jay. But there is a flag down from Jay Latson. But a flag down in the backfield or around the line of scrimmage. And they're calling him back, so the 31-yard touchdown run will not stand for Small. As it was a great play, but I think it might be holding coming back here. Tough break for O'Galley, as that was an electric play. I'm telling you, the passing attack for O'Galley, whether it's a swing pass or a deep ball, has been strong when they can get it to connect. 
And, and you are correct. It, it is holding. Instead of a touchdown, it's going to be second down and 19 for second down and 18 for O'Galley. Stuck back at the John Carroll 40. They got to make it up to the 23-yard line. So instead of a touchdown, you get second and 17 as your reward. Fourth down and 10, or four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second down and 17. Latson with split backs. Latson turns, gives Delvante Williams looking up the middle. It's going to be a short gain. Not enough to get back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's still third down and long for O'Galley. It's going to be about a third and 12 now for the Commodores. With under four minutes to go now in the third. Third down. Latson drops. Blitz coming. Stepping through. Pushing through. And Latson goes down. On the sack for a short loss, but a loss in and of itself. That one was weird. He was weaving back and forth, trying to find any space. He ends up getting dropped for the sack by multiple Rams. And now it's going to be fourth down and long, and uh, O'Galley will get set to punt here. So what well, was about to be a big touchdown, the holding ends up killing the drive, and now they'll have to punt from uh, inside the John Carroll 40. As number 33 will boot it away. Good punt nearing the end zone. Let's see if John Carroll lets it bounce. They do, but that will not go into the end zone. It'll be down to the eight yard line. So a good punt there by Alex Maldonado, the freshman, handling the punting duties. But with 2.46 to go in the third quarter, 7 0. Galley leads. John Carroll Catholic taking over first and 10 at their own eight yard line. Uberzadi provides optimal environment for each athlete to realize their peak physical and mental performance via the use of high-speed treadmill training with their propriety science-based protocols in combination with ground-based agility and strength training. Uberzadi is for the serious athlete, so if this sounds like what you need, visit them online at www.uberzadi.com or call Maximato at 321-412. Five nine seven two. Information is at the bottom of your screen. First down and ten. John Carroll Catholic at their own eight. This will be a long drive, but really for the rest of the game, you want to try and get this touchdown so you can set yourself up to win it with another one. But that one, a little screen pass, uh, doesn't get very far, but not too bad. It's going to be about a gain of three. Um, second down, or they're moving it forward a little more. It's just going to be second down and six for John Carroll Catholic up to their own 14 yard line. Nearing two minutes to go in the third quarter. As John Carroll gets set up, second down and six coming up now at their own 14. They turn give on the jet sweep, moving to the near side, turning a corner, moving it upfield, nearing. They're going to get past the line again. It's going to be first down, John Carroll, thanks to the play by number eight. Jacob Morales, and it's a first down for the Rams. First down and 10, John Carroll up to their own 22-yard line. Last play, gain of eight. Looking to keep the drive moving, roll out left. That's a new quarterback, the third, third of the game. It's gonna be number 17. He's going to try and roll through, but he's going to be dropped for a short loss by the O'Galley Commodore. The new quarterback in there looks to be number 17, Jax Van Aim. So second down and 10 for um, John Carroll to tackle in there. Josh Roberts, number 10, making the stop. One minute to go in the third quarter now for John Carroll with second down and 10. Or 11 at their own 21-yard line. Van Name. Quarterback turns, gives up the middle. Great move, breaking through. First down still on his feet. 
And that's a big run for John Carroll Catholic for the first down once again. By number five on the carry. Uh, that is it, Tony Colebrook. Colebrook makes a big run there, and they move it forward to their own 40-yard line. That's a gain of 19. First down, John Carroll, 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Aim drops back, looking over the top. They've looked for it multiple times. Spiral just goes over his head. That one, another good look by John Carroll, but just goes over the head of his receiver deep. Second down and 10 for the Rams. Well, recent coverage, second down and 10. Rams at their own 40 with 23 seconds to go in the third. I mean, for John Carroll, this is a formidable team that probably one of the higher teams in their entire season they're going to play. Obviously, I don't have their schedule. But O'Galley's going to be a good team for them, and they're, they're hanging up well. But O'Galley's defense playing strong. Colebrook tries to get a run going. He's going to get stopped for only a gain of one. And now it's going to be... Third down and nine. Yeah, it is fourth down. Fourth down and long, and John Carroll's going to get set to punt. But that punt will have to wait till the fourth quarter as O'Galley holds a 7 nothing lead over John Carroll Catholic in a quarter number four here at Commodore Stadium. I'd like to thank Solutions Property Management. Purchasing an investment property in Florida provides an opportunity to make a reasonable return on your investment. At Solutions Property Management of Florida, they understand that you have specific goals in mind when you run out of property, and Solutions Property Management offers the tools that you need to accomplish your goals. So Solutions Property Management focuses on maximizing your returns on an investment by maintaining your property and placing the right tenants. They recognize the importance of clear standards when working with tenants, and they provide a personal touch that allows them to connect with your tenants and keep them happy with the property. Let Solutions Property Management provide the tools you need to maximize your returns. Allow their team to handle any emergencies or problems that may arise when a tenant rents your investment property. For more information, visit www.solutionsrentalsfl.com or call them at 321-684-7793. Their information is at the bottom of your screen as well. As we get set to start the fourth quarter. Or uh, John Carroll Catholic. And it's going to be third down and eight. As it's third down, John Carroll. I misspoke on fourth. It is third down. Third down and eight. John Carroll at their own. A 42-yard line. Low snap. Van Name picks it up. Airing it out. Into double coverage. It is intercepted for a fourth time tonight by the O'Galley defense. This one's going to be returned with space down the sideline. He gets tripped up, but it's a big return on the interception by True by uh, Xavier Luis. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's uh, number two of the night for Luis. I think so. Second interception of the night for Luis. As it's going to be first down, O'Galley. As that's interception number five, actually. I said four. It's five now for that defense. As they are making John Carroll pay tonight through the air attack. First down and 10. O'Galley at the John Carroll 37. A touchdown here. Could start putting this game away here in the fourth quarter. I don't know if John Carroll's going to be able to score more than one touchdown, if at all. Uh, it's run up the middle there by Latavius Welch is stuffed by the defensive front. Must be a loss of a yard or two there. Second down and long for the Commodores. Father uh, Manny Larice meant to treat his son to a stake after a performance that he's had tonight. I definitely think it'll be his choice. <laughs> you're right. You're right. He, he he may not be a fan of stake. Second down and long split backs for Latson. As Latson throws the wheel route to Welch. Welch turns it upfield. Not going to get a big game, but he gets a short 
here just past the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third down and about seven for O'Galley. Third down and about seven for O'Galley at the John Carroll 34-yard line. Here they go, Lats and play fake throw, slant over the middle, it's broken up through the hands of TJ Robinson in coverage was Rob Jones, and that's going to bring up fourth down and seven for O'Galley, and I, I assume they'll go for it here. The problem is they've been 0 for 5, I believe, 0 for 4 or 5 on fourth down conversions tonight. We'll see if John Carroll can keep the defense up and running on these fourth down plays. Fourth down and long for O'Galley, 10-18 to go in, in the fourth quarter. Latson rolling out, blitz coming, steps up, pushing forward, and he'll be stopped. Well, we'll see, it's close. I think he was just short, but we'll see after he uh, was thrown forward on the tackle. Maybe I'm wrong, it looks like I might be. Nope, he was short there, so for the fifth or sixth, either way, O'Galley has not converted a fourth down tonight as John Carroll picks up another crucial stop to keep themselves alive. Defense is doing their job. Offense is not. We'll see if the Rams can get in the end zone here in the fourth quarter and tie this game up. Just been that blitz. It seems like they're saving it for third and fourth down and sending it at full force. And whatever the Commodores are drawing up isn't getting uh, an opportunity to set up. First down and 10. John Carroll at their own 28-yard line. After five interceptions... We'll see what quarterback's in. This is I, We've seen three different quarterbacks. Quarterback drops. It's still going to be Van Name. He rolls out to the right, directing his receivers like traffic, but he's going to get sacked over there on the far side for a loss. In there is number 13 on the sack, Tamir Jace. Jace doing a good, time, good job there on the pursuit. As John Carroll hurrying up to the line here. Second down and 10 for John Carroll. Nine and a half minutes to go in the game. Ben Aim drops back, rolls to the near side. Blitz coming there. He steps up, airs it out down the field. He has a man open. He overthrows him by a step. Wide open there was Rob Jones. And that's another tough one. When you're John Carroll, you need that touchdown. That one easily could have been one if you just put it right in the bread basket. Instead, it's a step out in front. And that deep ball still eludes John Carroll Catholic tonight. I want to say, no, no matter which quarterback it's been, they, they haven't been able to, to get that big completion that makes you say, okay, we, we need to keep our safeties back. Third down and ten. Well, they've had some plays that have gotten on the on target. They just haven't been able to be hauled in either, so it's been a little bit of a two-way issue there. Third down and 10 for John Carroll Catholic off the turnover on downs. Drops back. Van Name getting blitzed hard, slipping, and he's somehow still on his feet, but he's going to get dropped for a sack for a loss of about three or four. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 14 for John Carroll at their own 25. With nine minutes to go, do you go for it, or do you think that you can get another stop here and get the ball back? They're going to punt it. They will punt the ball here, so they're going to put the trust in the hands of their defense. I tell you, though, it could still be one deep ball away from John Carroll, so the game's definitely not out of reach with it being one possession, uh, especially with O'Galley still struggling to score the ball. Um, but we'll see here. John Carroll has the punt from deep in their own territory. Sets up, good kick, is spiraling down. It'll be down by Larice around their own 45, so Galley will take over on offense with eight and a half minutes to go in the game. Purchasing an investment property in Florida provides the opportunity to make a reasonable return on your investment. At Solutions Property Management of Florida, they understand that you have specific goals in mind when you rent out a property, and Solutions Property Management offers the tools you need to accomplish your goals. Solutions Property Management focuses on maximizing your returns on investment by maintaining your property and placing the right tenants. 
They recognize the importance of clear standards when working with your tenants, and they provide a personal touch that allows them to connect with your tenants and keep them happy when renting your investment property. Information is at the bottom of your screen. First down and 10, O'Galley at their own 45. A touchdown here could uh, be enough to win this one for the Commodores. We'll see what they can do offensively. Turn, give up the middle. It is Williams pushing forward for a gain of about five or six by uh, Delvonte Williams. 8.15 and counting to go in the game. O'Galley with the lead. Your O'Galley, you're just milking this clock. Would you like to score? Yes. But keep milking this clock as much as you can. You definitely have to have trust in your defense at this point as well. Second down and five. Run straight up the middle, breaking free. Delvonte Williams cuts back, still fighting. And that's a big run of about, of about 15, 15 plus yard run by Delvonte Williams. First down. O'Galley calling for tempo to hurry this one up as they're all the way up to the John Carroll 31-yard line. And it's going to be first down and 10. First down and 10, O'Galley, the John Carroll 30. Latson turns, gives Delvonte Williams again. Breaking tackles this time goes nowhere as the John Carroll defense makes the play. In there is number 53. Uh, among others on the tackle, that's Drew Nairbon. Uh, it's going to be second down and 10. O'Galley at the John Carroll 30. John Carroll desperately needs a stop here with seven minutes to go in the game. Second down, lats and turns to throw. Blitz coming, and he's going to get dropped for a big loss. Once again in there is three, uh, three Rams. Three Rams in there. TJ Alford and uh, Drew Nairbun lead the way there for the sack, and it's going to bring up third down and long for uh, O'Galley, third and 14, back to the John Carroll 34. Rams really need the stop here. Let's see if they can get it with six and a half minutes to go in the game. Run straight up the middle. Welch breaking three, free, but only going to get about five back to the original line of scrimmage. Fourth down and ten coming for O'Galley at the John Carroll Catholic 30. The punting unit is going to come out here from the 30, and they're going to be looking to pin them deep here and then have the defense pave the way to finish this one off. So the John Carroll makes the stop, but they're not going to have a positive field position. With no rushing on the punts, no uh, hope of blocking the punt or anything. You just got to hope you don't get pinned real deep. That one's going to go end over end. Let it bounce if you're John Carroll, and it does, thankfully, go into the end zone. So they will take over at their own 20-yard line. Water break here with 5.48 to go in the game. Last chance drive coming up for John Carroll Catholic. I'd like to thank Zone 6 for being a proud sponsor here of the Brevard Sports Network. Sorry, look. lost my read for him. Here we go. Zone 6 is a proud sponsor of BSN. Fundraising is vital for the success of their program. The funds they collect... The funds they collect aid in purchasing uniforms, equipment, and other pertinent expenses, as well as keeping the cost to the families of their athletes at a minimum. The funds will also help support support their program with community outreach and assistance programs to further educate, inspire, and be a service to our local communities. Please consider donating or sharing via social media at Zone 6 Reapers to help them reach their goal. Following the touchback, first and 10, John Carroll at their own 20. They start out with a swing pass. It's hauled in, break to tackle, bouncing it outside. That's a solid gain on first down. Trying to see who the quarterback is. I think they're going back to Whiteley to finish out this game, but I'm looking to make sure. I might be wrong with that. I am. It is back to number 19 for his second stint at quarterback. That's Shea Hartnett. 
as we've seen three quarterbacks rotate intermittently for O'Galley. It has just been uh, Jay Latson tonight. Second down, running it, trying to bounce it outside. That's going to go for a big loss. Not what you want to see if you're the Rams. I think for them you got to go to the passing game, and you got to stay there. Although I don't think they've found the success they wanted. There's been more opportunities there. The run game just hasn't come up enough with the time that's left. they got to go uh, try and get some passes to connect. Because now it's third down and eight for John Carroll Catholic at the room 22-yard line, under five minutes to go, trailing by a touchdown. Third down and eight for John Carroll. Backfield clears out. They throw the swing pass. Breaks a tackle. Turning up the sideline. Cutting back. Diving for the first. A flag comes in at the end of the play. And the receiver, I think, was Rob Jones. He's slow to get up, but he dove right towards the first. I think he got it, but there's going to be a hold on John Carroll. So this one is going to come back as he is still down on the play. Clock will stop at 4.32 to go in the game, but that first down play by John Carroll is going to get taken back, I believe. Great. Whatever they call it, Chris Ann's. Chris Ann's not happy. As flag will go on John Carroll. That backs him all the way up to their own 12-yard line. That's a huge penalty. And then I'll make it third down and 18. They definitely have to dial up a pass here, and I don't think I mean a swing pass. I mean something over the middle, something deeper. And they got to connect it. The quarterback and the receiver have to be on the same page here because you get something into that second level. Uh, that's where you're going to have some something happen. But with third down and 18 with under four and a half minutes to go, the Rams don't really have another choice in my opinion. As quarterback rolls out right, blitz coming with him, throwing on the run into double coverage, intercepted for a sixth time. This one has room in front. He'll be tripped up inside the 20. And guess who but Jay Latson, the quarterback with the interception. And that's number six for the O'Galley defense. And they're going to start inside the zone six red zone with under four minutes to go. And now scoring is uh, their number one priority to close this one out. Well, I, I mean, you want to talk, you know, I'm someone, I love defense. and uh, uh, <laughs> This is an awesome performance by this O'Galley defense. First down and 10, O'Galley at the John Carroll 16-yard line. Best starting field position tonight for the Commodores. Latson gets the interception. He's back at quarterback, turns hands straight up the middle, pushing the pile forward for a solid First down gain around the 10 yard line now for second down. Interesting note tonight, haven't seen any goal to go situations all night. Two, the O'Galley score came from 25 yards out. Another one that got called back came from 31 yards out. Uh, second down and five for O'Galley at the 10. Delvante Williams, he's gonna go backwards. Good stop by John Carroll. They're not, they're not done yet, but I mean with their offense really not going anywhere, it's gonna be very difficult even if they do get the stop here. It's going to be third down and eight for O'Galley at the John Carroll 13-yard line with three minutes to go and counting in this one. I think John Carroll still has all three timeouts. Maybe have only used one. Latson rolls out right, looking to throw. Pump fakes. He's going to get sacked from behind for another loss. And now that's going to bring up Or it's going to be no gain, rather. And it's going to bring up fourth down and eight for O'Galley at the John Carroll 13. They're not, 
I don't think they're going to punt it here. They're going to go for a field goal. And this could, in a way, seal the game here because I don't know. I still don't know if John Carroll will have time to get two possessions set up. There's no kickoff, so no onside kick. So you would have to get a touchdown, um, you know, get a stop, get the ball back. As the uh, Brandon Brown going to look to kick the field goal here from about 30 yards out. The kick is up. It is good. And O'Galley jumps ahead 10-0 to thanks to Brandon Brown's kick from about 30 yards out. This is awesome. He's been a force on defense in playing that defensive line and then being able to pull out the 30-yard the, the kick. And with two minutes to go, John Carroll's path to the win getting a little bit a uh, little bit rougher. As the cheerleaders take their push-ups. First down, John Carroll, their own 25. They got to score quick here. But they're going to run the ball, which is not going to go anywhere. That's going to be a stop. That hasn't worked all night. I uh, hate to tell you, but it just hasn't. And it's going to bring up second down in about eight. Clock ticking under two minutes to go. This one getting close to two over. And look, uh, defensively, I, I think you saw exactly what you wanted to see. You know, you, you want to shore up some things, uh, you know, in the back end there. But other than that, I mean, can't argue with six interceptions. No, you can't. A minute and a half to go in the game. John Carroll not playing too much tempo. They're going to drop back, throw over the middle. It is caught on the slant for a short gain. Not enough for a first. Clock continues to run. Hauled in by number 18, Dom Celestino. This first reception of the night. Third down and about four for John Carroll Catholic at their own 31-yard line. A minute 15 and counting. They trail by 10 again. No kickoff, so no onside kick potential. So you got to think a touchdown, a stop, and then getting the ball back. I don't know if it's possible at this point. Quarterback rolls out right. He's just going to take off. He's going to slide down. And the flag comes in late yep. on O'Galley on a late hit on the quarterback on um, Shea Hartnett. Under a minute to go, though, is this one, I think, may be all but over here from O'Galley. Uh, John Carroll will get a first down. Well, John Carroll's trying to end the night on a positive note. And, and, and right now, that's, that's what they are doing here. As they will get 15 yards, will move themselves up first and 10. John Carroll now at their own 48-yard line under a minute remaining. They trail by 10. First down and 10, quarterback lofts it up into coverage, overthrown and complete. Clock will stop now with 40, 40 seconds to go. Second down and 10, Rams. John Carroll still looking for that deep ball. Second down and 10, John Carroll at their own 48. Quarterback drops, sets his feet, throws over the middle. It's called, hauled into the far side. First down, Rams up to the O'Galley 40. It's hauled in by Chauncey Williams for the first 31 seconds to go. So the clock stops. Again, the win may be uh, out, out of really contention here for John Carroll, but score to kind of erase that goose egg would be nice here uh, late in it first down and 10 John Carroll the O'Galley 40 15 seconds to go muffs the snap quarterback step back offense back foot interception number seven and I don't think anyone's gonna stop him it's Xavier Lloris he's gone and as time expires pick six for Xavier Lloris an interception number seven goes to the house as time expires. And O'Galley is going to win it. And there won't be an extra point. That'll do it. O'Galley is going to win their spring game over John Carroll Catholic in a shutout. 16-0. to zero.
I th- and I, I mean I think with that, your BlackRock engineering and technologies player of the game. I mean, Larice, L- I believe three interceptions, one one of them a pick six to e- to end the game. What a night for O'Galley. Yeah, that defense, we were told before the game they knew that that was going to be strong. That was, that was their one no, known factor. And seven interceptions and a pick six. And that somehow still doesn't tell the tale of how dominant they were defensively. And you hear the shutout as well. Um, and, you know, the offense started to find their rhythm at the end of the game. The rushing attack for O'Galley this year, watch out for that. I think the passing attack wasn't too bad once they got it sorted out. So I think O'Galley is going to take a lot away from this game. They will, and, and, and look, John Carroll will, you know, their coaches are going to dive in and dissect this and uh, help their team move on. But uh, that will do it for us tonight. Tomorrow night we got regional final softball in the Vieira Hawks in Bartow. Alan Slaughterzinski will have that broadcast. Myself and Logan Pettit will head on down to Bayside to broadcast Vieira and Bayside spring game. For Jackson Robb, I'm Caleb Brown. For the Brevard Sports Network. Again, your final score, O'Galley 17, John Carroll 0. Have a great night, and you know the drill. Let's make it a sports night, folks.